Finance and Accounting Overview ERP-123 provides a richly featured accounting system that supports many advanced processes. Base system features include an accounts receivable system that's fully integrated with your sales order and shipping modules. The accounts payable system is fully integrated with the purchase order and purchase order receiving modules. You have a multi-tiered chart of accounts for your general ledger and multi-currency capability with effective dates that allow you to set currency uh, rates based on uh, certain time periods. The system supports multi-division accounting, which is having um, multiple divisions within the same database. And you can choose to batch or automatically process accounting transactions, which is called posting. Account groups and departments are used to create many statements. Both of these represent categories, and you can assign these categories to accounts within your system. This gives you the ability to produce what are known as mini P&Ls, uh, either by account group or by department. You have flexible period control within the system that allows you to set which accounting periods are open at any given time. You can have multiple periods open simultaneously. You also have user-definable terms and conditions as well as user-definable taxes. In this case, no tax updates are required um, in order to run the software. You can simply make these updates yourself. The undo feature allows you to make corrections simply and efficiently. And you have variable account types and financial category types that allow you to configure your standard reports yourself. The accounts payable system, being fully integrated, allows you to create AP invoices from purchase order received transactions. You can also create additional AP invoices manually by supplier. You can also offset accounts payable with receivables when necessary and make your payments by supplier using the AP payment module. There is also an auto payment module which is known as a check run. This allows you to pay multiple suppliers at the same time. There is also a module that's used to pre-approve all of the payments. The accounts receivable system is fully integrated with sales orders and shipping and allows you to create accounts receivable invoices from shipping transactions. You can also create invo invoices individually or en masse using the AR invoice generator. You can also add miscellaneous charges and freight charges to your invoice. AR comes with credit management via the sales order system. The sales order system has an approval process as well as a credit management process. The accounts receivable process and AR aging reports provide statements and collection reports. And you can also manage commissions, rebates, and other types of accruals. Let's take a look at the basic accounting flow within ERP-123. We'll start with the accounts payable side. Here you have purchasing, purchase orders, and from those purchase orders you will receive product and create receiving transactions. A module called PO Transaction Close allows you to see all of the receiving transactions that you've created and any open transactions in the PO Transaction Close module are being accrued prior to AP Invoice. The AP Invoice module is used to process all of the PO receiving transactions and here you can also create manual invoices as necessary. The AP Invoice module creates transactions that go to your general ledger. You can pay invoices using the AP Payment, which is an individual check one at a time, or the AP Auto Payment module, which is a check run. And this also, of course, creates transactions that go to the general ledger. On the accounts receivable side, we start with shipping transactions from your sales orders. Shipping transactions are created using the shipping module, and the shipping transaction release module is where all shipping transactions are being accrued prior to AR invoicing. AR invoices can be created either using the AR invoice module or the invoice generator, which will create multiple invoices simultaneously. 
You can manage the invoices within the AR Invoice module, adding freight and miscellaneous charges. And once you save it, transactions will be created that will go to the general ledger. The AR Payment Receive module allows you to receive monies from your customers. And um, this module, of course, also creates um, general ledger transactions. Now, both the AR and the AP invoicing systems are supported by a wide variety of reports for aging and a variety of other things. ERP123 supports a wide variety of accounting process, but there are some general ones that we'll talk about in these overviews. The first would be a batch processing accounting model. In this case, purchases are typically expensed immediately or are charged to inventory. The system uses then the margin report to give you your cost of goods sold for the period. A work in process inquiry module provides WIP values on a real time basis, so this report needs to be taken at month end. You then have the inventory history system for month end inventory valuations. All of these history systems are based on running your period end history update module. You'll then use journal entries to adjust your inventory cost of sales and work in process valuations. This is a typical batch processing model. ERP123 also provides what's known as real-time inventory accounting. In this case, inventory transactions will generate accompanying accounting transactions. And this will produce real-time inventory valuations, real-time work in process, real-time cost of goods sold, as well as accruals for purchasing and shipping. Costs for the accounting system are normally based on the item master standard cost. Most accounting transactions use the item master standard cost when they are created, but there are exceptions. Cost of sales is normally the item standard cost, unless there is a work order associated with the sales order line, in which case the system will treat that work order as the standard cost for the particular sales order. We'll talk about a couple of basic inventory accounting methods. The first is a standard inventory accounting system where purchases are directly expensed. In this case, purchases are charged directly to expense accounts on AP invoices, and purchase orders should also be um, set up to do the same thing. This would involve having your item master inventory account set to an expense account for each item that will be expensed. Some companies charge purchases directly to inventory. In this case, purchase orders are charged, um, are marked as inventory accounts, and the AP invoice then, uh, if it's not changed, will be an inventory account. We also have to talk about how you manage freight uh, landed cost as a function of uh, inventory. In this case, item master inventory accounts will be set to actual inventory account numbers. In real-time inventory accounting, accounting transactions are generated for all inventory movements. This results in live inventory, work in process, and cost of goods sold valuations. The accounting system setup module allows you to selectively activate real-time inventory accounting processes. There are several. PO receive, which generates accruals, and these accruals are reversed at AP invoice, and variances are generated. There is shipping accruals. This is known as bill and hold, and these shipping accruals are reversed when AR invoices are created. Work order flushing transactions, which are materials going into work orders, can be accrued to work in process. Work order labor and work order overhead can also be accrued to work in process. Work order receive transactions relieve work in process and add to inventory. This is typically done at standard cost. The accrual value will be done at standard cost for the particular item. This is because 
work orders cannot be properly evaluated until the work order closes. The work order costing module will then generate work order variances and clear work in process once the work order closes. Let's take a look at the real-time inventory accounting chart. Real-time inventory accounting starts with PO receiving transactions, which are accrued. And these accruals are reversed at the time of accounts payable, and variances are generated depending on how you have your items set up. If you set your inventory account to the same account as your variance account, then no variances are generated. Variances, in this case, are forced back to inventory. In the case where the variance account is set to a different account, then you will actually generate variance. Now, this will also depend on how your item master cost type is set. In the case of standard cost, then you're going to generate price variance against that standard cost. In the case of average costing, it is normal to force the variance back to inventory. At the time of purchase order receiving, the item master cost will update, again, based on the way that you have your cost type set at the item level. At the bottom here, we have shipping transactions, which accrue to what is known as bill and hold. This is shipments that have been shipped out but not yet invoiced, known as bill and hold in our system. During the accounts receivable process, bill and hold accruals are reversed. And if you have real-time inventory accounting on, you'll also generate cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold will come normally from one of two places, either the item master standard cost for the item at the time of the invoice creation, or if there is a work order associated with the sales order line, then the cost of sales for that sales order line will be um, the cost of that work order. Now, in the case of both of these purchasing and shipping, um, these uh, create general ledger transactions, which uh, are, in this case, type PO accrual and type AP invoice. Here we have type uh, SO ship, uh, which is the accrual, and we have um, cost of sales and the uh, AR invoice. So these are the various transactions that are going to get generated. Now, over here, we're looking at the, um, uh, the work in process system. So here, we start with transactions which are work order flush and work order labor. And work order labor transactions also generate work order overhead. These are typically accrued in work in process. And then work order receive transactions up until the time because you can have partial receiving. So if you partially receive, the system will accrue to inventory at the item master standard cost for that work order receive transaction. At the end, when the work order closes, then variances are generated using the work order costing module. There are also simple counting transactions, so these are just movement transactions. Minus adjust, plus adjust, and physical count and item counting transactions, which are used in the cycle counting processes. There is also a cost adjust, which is typically done at the time of either purchase order receive or work order receive. Cost adjusts adjust the item master standard cost, and what they are is they're the revaluation of all of the inventory in the system. So real-time inventory accounting has a variety of different things that um, it deals with, and we're going to have a, um, a very detailed section on real-time inventory accounting later in this video set.